seven minutes that I've been asked to speak for when I've got two and three. Um, <laughs> the first thing is learning objectives. Um, in this school, we have teaching and learning groups who get together now and again and um, talk about um, learning. And one of the things we looked at was learning objectives. And I've always been battling, I think, with my learning objectives and struggling with them. And um, so I was looking at learning objectives um, in teaching and learning and in my teaching. At about the same time, Andrew Curran, who's a paediatric neurologist, came to speak to us um, about the teenage brain. And the idea that students are more likely to learn if we can make it real and that they can see a point to it. So working on both these things, I then went to a conference just before Christmas and saw somebody called Zoe Elder speaking. She's written a book called Full On Learning and her Twitter um, tag is at Full On Learning and she's from uh, Cleveland School. And she talked at a conference about marginal gains and tied these sort of ideas together that I was thinking about. And what I'm going to talk about is one of the marginal gains that she spoke about. So, struggling with my learning objectives, I'd started using Walton Wilf, and I know that um, some people, particularly on Twitter, are sort of focusing that at the minute, but I like it because it makes sure that I'm focusing on the learning objective rather than um, doing something in the lesson. And I think before I was using it, sometimes my learning objectives did slip into that doing category rather than the learning category. But they still didn't drive the lesson the way that I wanted to. So Zoe introduced me. Can you just click it on, John? John, 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 John. Yeah. Um, Zoe talked about um, this, and this is her um, diagram. And it's the so that. It's this marginal gain, a really small thing that you can do that will make a big difference in the classroom. And she uses so that as a connective between the learning and the outcome, or the learning and the objective. And she says that it makes the learning relevant to students. And it answers their so what. So when you put the learning objective up and they're sort of, well, so what? How does that relate to me? You give them a so that that actually tells them what it relates to. And what that does is, I started to use that, and what it does is it makes you really think about every lesson that you plan. And it makes the purpose of the lesson really, really obvious. It helps the students understand why you're using particular activities, and it really drives the lesson. And I feel like I've found a way of using the learning objective now that really will. Can you click again, John, thanks? So this is one of my learning objectives from this week. I'm not saying it's a good one, but you can see um, how I've used so that. So we are learning to closely analyse our mistakes with question two of the exam, so that we understand what to do to maximise marks. So they understand why they're working on this again, because we did it last lesson, and then you've you've got that idea of maximising marks. Um, and reading Zoe's blog about these things, um, I saw a comment on the bottom from author and tweeter David Didal, and he goes under the um, Twitter tag of uh, at learning spy. And he's added to this by adding a because at the end of it, which I really like as well, because what it, that does is it emphasises the point of the activity. Can you check in? Thank you. And this because... Um, well, you can see what I did with my learning objective. We've got the well learning to the so that and then the because we really want to get at least a grade um, C in our exam. And I really like it because it really emphasises the point to uh, the activity and it really emphasises what you're going to be doing in the lesson. And it's made a real difference to my year 11s because one, I've been using the we really want to get at least a grade C quite a few times and I think they're really believing now that actually I think that they're capable getting at least a grade C, and the at least is hope, you know, showing some of them that actually they might be capable of more than that. And um, the, group, the group I've got is one that's mostly targeted um, Ds, but we're, we're really getting there with it. And I'm finding that using this sort of learning objectives, it take a, takes a bit of time, it <coughs> takes up quite a lot of space on the, uh, the whiteboard, but um, it seems to be working. So uh, I feel that I'm still on a learning journey with this because I'm not quite sure I'm using it in the way that um, Zoe sort of expects. And I've been having quite a few email conversations with her about it to sort of move my learning on. Um, so I think that I haven't quite got it yet, really, but I'm getting there. And I thought I'd share it with you because it's something I'm quite excited about at the minute. Can you get on? Right, the next thing I'm going to talk about is um, yet. And growth mindset. We've been looking at that as in our teaching and learning, well, in the school, actually as well. And um, I'm not going to talk about it in the way of kids not getting things yet. I'm going to talk about my yet moment that I had recently. 
And what I love, that after almost 25 years of teaching, I still find out that I've got a lot to learn, and it's just as well that I quite enjoy doing it. Um, I'm an English teacher, teaching P in the classroom, you've all heard of it, and Year 11 getting ready for the English exam, they've been learning it for nearly five years, P, but some children still didn't get it. Um, I can say yet, but they've been learning it for five years, and maybe after nearly five years, they might not be able to get it. And I was thinking, you know, how am I going to prepare them for this question in the exam if they can't do these P paragraphs? How do I actually get them to get it? And I went away for the weekend and thought about it. And one of the things I thought about was that I could remember being at school and being taught the, the same things in the same way over and over again. And sometimes that made no difference. It didn't matter how many times that teacher was going to teach me to do that particular skill over and over again. I just couldn't get it. And I'm not going to upset any um, particular subject teachers in here by saying, you know, the subject that that sometimes happened in. But um, for me, it, I, I, I remember going into an exam being told by the teacher, definitely do this question, knowing that there was no way I was going to do that question because I'd never got it and I still didn't understand it. And I felt that here I was with my year 11 group, teaching P to death because that's the way we teach it. That's the way we're supposed to do it. But what if some of the ways that we teach these things don't work with all the kids. It's worked with quite a lot of people, but there's some still that it didn't work with. So what do we do then? Do we keep plodding on thinking it's their fault because they don't get it? And I think in the past I might have been guilty of that sometimes, thinking it's their fault because they, they don't get it. And um, I thought, you know, when I was trying to come up with this new way of um, thinking about it, what I actually needed to do is come up with a new way of doing it. So that's what I did. Um, I came up with a new way of doing P, and uh, we call it our formula, and it seems to be working really well. And a few of them have said they've been using it other lessons too, and it's been working well for them. And I'm not going to give you the formula, because you don't need to know it, because this um, little bit of the talk isn't about P, and it isn't about the formula. It's about growth, uh, growth mindset, and it's about my growth mindset. It's about me thinking, I don't know how to help them to learn yet, and then coming up with a different way of doing it. Thank you.